All right, people, welcome back. More Diando commentary. So uh, we're joined by no one. <laughs> no one is here to fucking join me. God, that sucks. Like, uh, I have to do it solo. I gotta take it solo. Well, we got Akatsuki. Uh, it's a team, and I guess his name is Weed. Uh, every day he's on here smoking it up at uh, 1536. Like he's playing BA or maybe Phantom Knights. But no, Barbar is not a car that you would play in like, the Phantom Knights. So probably BA. And we got Ed Edvor nine at fifteen thirty two and uh reasoning. I have no idea. Reasoning? Hmm. Um I mean I thought you were playing monarchs. You have no extra this. I thought you were playing monarchs, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Uh no, it's monarchs, it's monarchs. Yep, yep, call that eight. Like I mean it's not like they're gonna get their effect from being summoned anyway, but it's like really reasoning and, and monarch we haven't seen that since uh Earthbound Immortals in the first week, and we're like, nah, this isn't working, but hey, I mean, this guy, Endeavor, here, all over here wants to do it. So, I mean, if he can go ahead and bust out the power of the Monarchs with the fill spell, locking it out, I mean, locking BAs out of the extra deck, that's power, that's power. But, um, yeah, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Sanzi was supposed to join me, then he's not on Skype, you know? Uh, then I was like, hey, uh, Omega, are you busy? You wanna join? Nothing. Stu, you busy? You wanna join? Nothing. Lunar, you busy? You wanna join? Nothing. Mal's not on. Like, where is everybody? It's it's fine, I guess. I, I can I can solo it. I can solo it, people. I can keep you guys amused and entertained. Now, what am I gonna do at daily duels? I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, we're been playing Dark Magicians, and I got a little while uh, as of recording this. Uh, the endo commentary is supposed to go up at twelve. It is now eleven thirty-four. So. To record this, render this, upload this, it'll probably be late, but at least, you know, you'll have it. I've been pretty good with, you know, getting the content out to you guys on time, but, I mean, there's not much I can do when, you know, I need a partner, and we have so many tag partners, and no one shows up, so, I mean, what you gonna do, you know? Also, I was busy with the car, you know? Yeah, if you guys wanna know what that is, how that's going, still terrible. We got that part, that last part that we thought we needed. We replaced it, and the car is still just running terrible. Still, another reasoning, another one. Like, what, uh, fuck it, just call eight again. I mean, I mean, what's uh, what's the worst that he can? What's the worst that he can get? Like one of his lower levels. Like, I just I don't understand where you're going with this. I mean, okay, well, idea will summon at least Edo, so that's nice. But you know, weed over here. I mean, he has back row at the ass. Like, yeah, he he's like he's like, if you go ahead and it's definitely stop. Always stop that. Damn, hit him with that skill drain, though. Like, no. <laughs> Damn. Got Caveman Yugi over here. So, the car, it, it, like, starts up, and it'll turn off, and then, like, you'll be driving it, and it'll be like, it'll be like, and it won't want to accelerate, and it just cut off on you. It's just, it's fucking a nightmare. It really is. It's like, ah. Uh, so, ah, uh, I guess back to the drawing board with that one. All right, well, that's that's nice, so. Alright, Monarch Storm Force, Monarch Storm Force. I think he milled one, so. Uh, he really wants that Monarch Storm Force so he can go ahead and tribute off his Barbar bar, and then the idea to actually get off a Monarch. I mean, there's skill skill drain on the field, but, uh, you know, what you're gonna do? At least you got a beater, and, you know, a, a beater and Caveman Yu Gi Oh! is, like, one of the best things you can ask for, right? I mean, not even Dante can do anything, because Dante won't get his effect of milling to even go up to 25 anymore. So, that, that would definitely hurt. That would definitely hurt, but. You know, we see BA still playing that skill drain at times. You know, maybe uh, rejuvenate them a little bit since Beatrice is uh, out in the TCG now, but I don't think I've really seen much of them. You know, it just seems like Phantom Knights are a much stronger deck. While BA, it's kind of like just end all be all. Your monsters are going to float, you know. Uh, you know, their spells and their, uh, their, their traps, I'd say spells and traps, but uh, Phantom Knights' traps also float and, you know, uh, keep the plays and resources going as well. Uh, you know, with a, with a very powerful. Uh, scrap dragon esque monster who can uh, pop itself to summon some rank forwards and stuff like that too. It's a, it's a very powerful deck, really, really a really wonderful deck. <laughs> and when you just throw in more rank three shenanigans, and you can have Dante help you out too. It's just yeah. So while in the uh, you know the OCG, well, Burning Abyss is pretty much gone with Dante at one. You know, definitely still the top deck is uh, um, Phantom Knights, despite the blue eyes and the Klee plays. So. Yep, yep, still some great plays. So, so, he got himself that Monarch Storm Forth, which is, I guess, fine. So he's going to go ahead and chain to the effect. The Rebus is going to go ahead and, I guess, put himself back. But uh, as soon as the Rebus activates the effect, he's going to Solemn Strike, which, uh, I guess, that's, uh, that's fine. 
uh, strike still expensive really 46 plus dollars i mean you know hopefully it goes ahead and gets hit and then uh it'll be like maybe like a maybe like a five to ten dollar card and everybody can pick up their one copy when it's limited to one and just put it in your deck i mean simple as that you know so hopefully it gets to that you know i definitely think that the price hike uh one of the influences of the, of the pr price hike is definitely the fact that it's at three you know if you can only run one in your deck i mean you know the price drop, which is the trend prices would drop because people would essentially be getting rid of them. You know, I'm saying, think about it. I have three solemn strikes, right? It gets limited to one on the ban list. I have two solemn strikes I can't do shit with. I mean, unless I literally have three different decks I'm gonna put them into. So, you know, instead of just taking that neg, maybe I can get a little bit of my profit back. You know, get rid of uh, the two extra copies to someone who never got this picks up their strikes. Two different people, you know, for you know, 10 to maybe $20, and, you know, earn some of your profit back, but, you know, this price is definitely going to drop when it gets hit, because, you know, this, this is ridiculous, this, that's one of the major factors why this card's so expensive, because you need a play set, so, you know, as long as this card's at 3, and it's so freaking good at 3, I mean, I mean, it'll be great at 1, too, where it belongs, but, you know, just 3, no, <laughs> no like I said, we, we can't, we can't, we can't sit here and say, yeah, Strike? That that's fine. That should be at three. But cards like Compulse and Book of Moon? No, 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 no. Those cards gotta be at one. They're too powerful. But Strike? No, no, that's fine. <laughs> like I said, a counter trap card that can stop uh, inherent special summons. You know, you exceed strike. You ex you, you know, synchro strike. You uh, pendulum summon strike. And any monster effect anywhere that activates anywhere as you close all monster effect activating the grave monster effect that activates in hand on the field doesn't matter. Strike. Like, it's a very powerful trap card. For only 1500 Only 1500 <laughs> Like, someone was uh, arguing and saying that, uh, you know, Warning is, you know, a much better card. But, I, I, you know, despite them both being solemn S cards, I really can't compare them. I mean, they both stop Inherent Summons. Alright, they both got that. But, like I said, one deliberately stops all monster effects while one stops Summons. You know? While I can't Solemn Strike your normal Summon, I can do, I, I can do that with Warning. But... You know, if you already have a monster on the field, you know, if you already have a bear and you already have a tanky, you know, my solemn warning is not going to stop that bear from throwing a chair, you know? So, like I said, they, they both stop all in here and summons, they both pay life points, they're both summon cards, but they have two different roles when it comes to that second effect, and then both of them are very powerful. Stop all summons, you know, including them normal summons, or I think it's stop normal summons, I like, can't stop all summons, they can't stop trigger summons, ignition summons, but it can still stop, you know, inherent summons, normal summons, which is... Fantastic for 2,000 life points? Hell fucking yeah. Definitely deserved one. Solemn Strike, stop Inherent Summons and all monster effects for 15? Yeah, that deserves to be hit at down two as well. It's ridiculous. Just fucking ridiculous. So we see uh, Return, we see the Karaz, uh, Idea, and Prime. So I guess he went and Monarch Storm Fourth and tributed off his Barbar for the Karaz and kept his, uh, his Prime that he summoned in his Idea, which I guess is fine. So, uh, Weed, I mean, you, you flipped up that skill drain, I mean, I'm kind of wondering how you're going to come back from this one. No, you kind of just dug yourself into a hole. You thought that, hey, if I flip up the skill drain, then I would uh, definitely have it, and it didn't look like so. I mean, I thought all that back row, but, you know, especially with this Monarch guy over here playing Reasoning. Like, Reasoning in Monarchs. Like, like I said, we haven't seen that since Earthbound, and I did not like it. Well, you could, you know, and I had more potential in the actual call. Like, I could uh, go ahead and call... Call like, you know, they could call wrong and I could summon an Earthbound as long as I had a field spell. But the Monarchs, I mean, what? You want to summon either your lower level Monarchs or your higher level Monarchs? You're going to summon like, you know, Idea Edos? Meh. Or you're going to summon your big Monarchs that won't even get their effects contributed. I mean, unless you summon Karaz, which we saw Karaz, so if he activates Reasoning and calls it wrong, summons Karaz, Karaz can't go upset. It's actually one of the great things that makes uh, Karaz so good, is that it just when it says it's normal or special summon. Same thing with uh, when uh, Delg went up in price, and everybody's like, what the fuck, Delg's not even good, why did Delg go in price? Because Delg, it's similar to Karaz, when it's normal or special summon, so you can go ahead and go like, alright, um, you know, Ether, Ether go ahead and summon Delg and then banish some shit from the graveyard. Well, it's not the best of plays, it's a play that's available for this new version of Monarchs that you couldn't do with the old version of Monarchs. You know, you can't just go ahead and special summon a, a Ryza or get its effect or special summon a, uh, you know, uh, or a Caius or something like that. So, yep. Anti-Spell Fragrance, there we go, yeah. I'm still surprised, I'm still surprised that this card is just so fucking powerful. Like, you completely lock out the Pendulum game, and it just, you side it in. Like, you always side it in, and it hurts Monarchs, it hurts Pendulum-based decks. Like, it hurts a nice chunk of the meta. 
So, you know, it definitely has to slow down this modern guy. Like, he can't just, you know, start it off, activate multiple pen DDs, get multiple searches, and go off. He has to take it slow. He has to set his domain. He has to set his pen DD. He has to set his uh, tenacity. He has to set his uh, march and return. Like, he has to take this extremely slow, a whole turn slower, which is definitely not something that you uh, want to see. Uh, so, uh, hopefully he'll be able to, uh, oh, question mark, never mind. Oh, I put a question mark. <laughs> oh, I accidentally closed that. Oh, uh, he accidentally closed that. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Can you uh, repeat what you just, oh, just type? I guess I'll go ahead and put this down here, I guess, because I don't want to be in the way. So he set that tenacity and see, like, tenacity can get you something, but then you gotta set that too, like, this hurts, like, I, I was hoping that this, and, uh, Ed War guy, siding in, you know, going to game two, you would have sided in the Twin Twisters, hopefully, because, you know, there's this, the, the side deck, what you just typed, uh, I didn't see what you just messaged, closed, uh, out the window. You know, like, look how, look how slow he has to take this duel now. So, definitely some Twin Tertius, because there is some serious hate for, uh, for Monarch, so. Maybe he'll be able to, uh... Now we are friends. We are? I mean, if you say so. If you say so. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea who you are. I mean, you probably, I'm assuming you're one of my good subscribers, and I really do appreciate it. But to say that we're friends? I mean, that's, 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 that's kind of crazy. Oh, wow. Galaxy Cyclone. That's slow. I, I mean, I get it. You know, not all decks can, you know, pay the cost of the pitch of the Twin Twister, but... Ah, uh, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> Alright. And then pop this Regeki, which he had to set, so that's kind of funny. And then, ah, there's Twin Twister, there we go, ha, ah, ah. ha. I mean, you can piss that Prime, piss that Prime, piss that Pendidi, like, let's go. Wow, and you're not gonna get rid of the anti spell player. I guess he's like, fuck it, fuck it. I guess he's like, you know what, let me clear up the back row, since I know that it's, uh, anti spell fragrance. Wow, well, hit a solemn warning and a master strength. Got the Regeki too, so he's seeing a little bit of number generator. And then I guess he's gonna summon a Reapers, and then a Reapers can just spin back the anti spell fragrance. So, alright, alright, I see you, I see you, I see you. So, so we're gonna go ahead and see Tenacity, I mean, Tenacity banished for Prime, the Moon Prime. Like, alright, alright. So, literally, Weed is down to his last card right now. Like, that, that's, and uh, this last piece of background is very important because, you know, Despite all your monsters, they're not going to help you in this situation, especially being locked out of the extra with domain, you know. So, yeah, he's obviously going to tribute summon a rebirth, send two, and then get rid of this anti-spell frequency. So, hopefully this last piece of back row, the card that didn't get uh, Twin Twister or Galaxy Cyclone, is definitely enough to lock it down, because, you know, he's, he's falling out of resources way too quick. Like, Weed over here, he just didn't open up well at like BA, you know. No Dante at all in this duel, like, it's crazy. Like, where's this first turn Dante that was promised? Zero out of ten. But he got a butt ton of back row, but it just doesn't seem like the back row is doing anything. Like, he had the hate. The anti-spell fragrance. The the master is trick. He had the hate. But then, you know, it's totally fine to go ahead and counter with the Twin Twister. He's just going to go ahead and call it right now. GG. And I guess that is it, people. Just going to go ahead and scoop it up. Because that is definitely... I, I can't see how he'll come back from this. He, he literally got rid of all his floodgates. And while floodgates are nice to go ahead and lock it down, I mean... You get that, you get that back row to pop it, you know. So I, I really do appreciate Twin Twister. Like I said, can Twin Twister, uh, should Twin Twister be limited? No. Semi? I can see Semi. I can see Semi. Uh, that was a quick duel. I kind of feel like I want to get another one in, despite me being by myself. So I'll uh, be right back. All right, people. We got another duel. So we have Card Shark here at eleven twelve, and Master GM Magic Boy here at only two hundred and fourteen. But you know, we're still not gonna underestimate him. And it looks like Card Strike guy over here is the one who's doing something interesting. So we've seen Alert of Darkness, get rid of that Breaker, and summon Shadal Dragon. Just, to, just just summon it, you know? Not not set it, just summon it as a 19 beater. Like, alright, you know, will we actually see some Shadal action? Like, whoo, haven't seen that deck in a cool minute. Like, Construct? I, 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 you know, personally, I didn't really think that they need to go to extreme banning Construct. Maybe, like I said, maybe limited. One, one would have been fine. Banned, and you killed the deck. And clearly, they killed the deck. Like... For goodness sakes, they definitely did. Oh my god, is this man playing Dark Worlds? Like, hello? So, drag down. <laughs> I guess I guess the other three cards in his, in his hand are all Dark Worlds, and he's like, go ahead, because, ugh. That's one of the best cards that Dark Worlds have, drag down. They go ahead and 
you go, they go ahead and get in your hand, pick out something nice, while all you get is to pick a Dark World card. Yeah. And then, while it would be a name generally on the player planet card, because, you know, both players get rid of a card, draw a card, and you neg on the play. Uh, with, if you pitch the right dark, if you get the right dark world pitch, then you even out, and you get them uh, either a graph in the graph for a pop, or you know a beige for a draw, snow for a search. Like there, there is some serious, uh, some serious power when it comes to this card in dark world. It's like, oh my god, it's just it's actually one of the things that makes dark world so powerful. Besides just graph being stupid, like the graph is still like one of the top ten like dumbest cards ever made like why would you make a card like that like oh yeah go ahead and just you no know, return the monster back to your hand and summon it from the graveyard like what <laughs> like who thought that was a smart idea so you just summon the monster turn the monster summon graph it's fucking 27 beater it, it dies summon the monster return the monster summon, like it's just like an infinite fucking resource of boss monster it's ridiculous it's not once per turn you can summon as many graphs as you want it's ridiculous you know Multiple graphs off of one, uh, uh, what's his name? The, wow. You sent Trick Clown? Uh, okay, I guess, I guess, uh, I have no idea what the other card is, but you sent Trick Clown. I seriously thought that you would, like, I guess maybe kill it this turn, I'm assuming? What do you send? You sent Silva, right? Silva will go ahead and come back, and then Trick Clown pay a thousand to go ahead and come back, so. So, uh, you guys want to go ahead and draw? Drag down? Either one of you guys want to draw. Also drag down. No one? No one wants to draw for drag down? Like we get into this darkness. Like you look at this experience once again. Once again, this is rating experience. Not gonna draw off drag down. Um Um Drag Down? Okay, okay. Never mind, never mind. Card track is just gonna go ahead, I guess, assuming we leave the duel. Like, dude. Like, all that experience, all that rating, you're just gonna leave. Like, what the fuck? Mm-mm, mm, -mm, mm, -mm. I'm assuming he disconnected. I mean, it's even, if he, is he even still on? There's card masters, you bell. What happened? God. <laughs> like, what happened? I guess he's like, I don't want to do against Dark Worlds. Like, is that it? Like, what the hell happened? Like, did you just disconnect or what? You had... So much rating, so much experience over your opponent, and you just left. Like, mm. ah, that's anticlimactic. All right, I guess I can get like a maybe like a single in. I kind of want to get this to like twenty minutes, so bear back. All right, finally a single. That takes a while. There's not a lot of people hosting duels, especially over a thousand rating. But hey, I'll wait. I could give you guys that content. So we have uh, RK9 here at a thousand seventeen, and Mr. Drake on 95 here at 1071, and it looks like Infernoids. Okay, All right, a little bit of Inferno action. Uh, Card Shark, he never messaged me back, so I don't, I don't know. I guess, I guess he, he was still on. So, like I said, I'm assuming. Wait, <laughs> hello. <laughs> like I said, I'm assuming that uh, that he just left because it doesn't seem like he disconnected. Or if he did disconnect, he got on that real quick. I messaged him fairly quick. I think he left, so I'm kind of wondering what's up. Like, I guess he just straight up didn't want to duel Dark Worlds. Like, like is that your thing? And uh, we're seeing Gold Sarcophagus being played here. So, uh, Gold Sarcophagus still a very powerful card. Uh, I believe it's back at three. I want to say in the OCG, but still limited here. It's. I mean, like I said, if you were to ask me, you know, Daniel, what do you think Gold Sarcophagus? I'd say one. You know, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a even out two turn weight for any f card in your deck, which is very powerful. Very powerful. And with the shenanigans that you could do with Necroface too, it's kind of, you know, like I said, if you really want something like that, you can always play, you know, um, uh, what's it, Capsule? Capsule? You know, the problem with Capsule is that it stays on the field, you know, but the bonus is it's face down so you don't know what the card is, which is nice, so. but uh, it stays on the field. So if you turn to a MST that Capsule, then, it's, then that card is pretty much gone while this, while he's keeping it on the field right now to keep the counter. It's technically not like that. So, also, why didn't you play freaking Soul Absorption before you attack with Banisher? Like, whatever. Whatever. So, K I mean, RK9 here, I mean. Yeah. It, is it banishing time? Yeah. So, these cards are banished simultaneously, which means. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he would gain a thousand. I believe he gains a thousand. For each. Yep. Yeah, for gain for each. Yep. So. Yep, and then he's going to go ahead and activate that D-Prison. So, more Bandits, but now he's going to block with Seer, making his uh, monster unaffected, which is very powerful, very powerful. So, 
So pretty much you activate soul absorption, play that out, pot of cupidity, you're getting five uh you're getting some five thousand life points. That, that's that's power. That's power. Yep. I believe I could tap chambers all backwards, so I believe Seer still gets banished and Deep Prison gets banished, then the attack grows through, so he should be getting, if these cards should be banished, and he should get a thousand life points, right? Because when these cards resolve, uh, Banisher's still on the field, but, hey, you know. Like, what's up with this? Like, you could have activated Soul Absorption, and you could have gained, like, a thousand more life points if you turn have another Banisher, another one. Like, alright. <laughs> I mean, it's not like, uh, you only have three of those in your back, but, hey. So, uh, RK9 here, I mean, do you have another Seer to protect? Because this might be another D prison. Is it another D prison? It is another D prison. Like, wow, just banish your D prison. Oh, that only protects from destruction, sir. Yep. So, go ahead and get banished. Like, mm -mm 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 -mm. like literally, you had to run that play back again. Summon banish here. Set the D prison. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Go ahead and get himself a grander golem. Like, I wonder what he's going to do with that. Never been the biggest fan of Grinder Golem. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, I I get two tokens, but I'm gonna give you this three thousand beater. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you cannot normal summoner set the turn during the same turn. Like, mm. seeing banish of Anantra to go ahead and summon Anantra. I I, I was kind of clicking on. It. I was like Anantra, Anantra. Ooh, what do you do? Targo and monster, no. Uh, Targo and face up monster. And return it to the hand. Okay. So, return his monster to the hand. And then what? Monster gate. Ah, ah, okay. Ah, now I see you. Red lines, twin twisters, Lumina. Some Lumina. <laughs> he didn't really get anything that he wanted. And void launch? Like, I don't see that card being played that often. So you can attack, but you might run into another D prison, which would definitely suck. Now nah, he's just gonna go ahead and take the mill during the end phase expansion, dark hole, and burial. God damn, where are all your infernoids? Like, holy shit! Like RK9, are you actually gonna get beat by this fucking guy right here? He's playing another soul absorption, so a thousand for each card. Go ahead and summon banisher, attack over him, and gain uh, a thousand life points. <laughs> like, holy crap, RK9, you're luck. You're luck with this deck. I duel against the Inferno guy at the regionals, and that man had the, the, the luck of the gods. So, it's that, with reasoning, and, you know, at least you have three reasoning. I mean, look at OCG. They don't have one reasoning. I think Infernoids, I don't, I don't even think that there are anything over there. Like, holy crap. And RK9, like, I don't know. You're just, your monster to spell and trap ratio just seems really off. Like, you should be playing a lot more monsters than spell and traps. A lot more. Like, at least 20 something monsters. Damn, Arcanine is just feeling the struggle right now. Like Drake just builds up uh, resources and keeps poking you for 16. Caveman, you get up in this bitch. One up you and poke you to death. <laughs> Say, well then. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Your, your deck just doesn't look that great right now. Are you getting ran over by a tour bus? Like, oh my god. Alright, can you top deck into anything? Anything, sir. I just, I don't know what you're doing. Your deck, it just seems so bad. Like, I'm assuming that maybe you're drawing reasonings and you can't get a way to get around Banisher. Like, is that it? We're seeing a reasoning being played. Uh, and I don't think you can even do that. So, I think I gotta excavate to the graveyard and it's just, wow. Wow. So, Infernoids get beaten by a Banishing deck when they banish themselves. All because he just couldn't get the right mills. Just, hey, what you gonna do? Infernoids, right? All right, people, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, call it for this uh, d, d commentary. And will this be on time? Absolutely not. It is now 11.59, which means that I have one minute to end this video, edit, render it, and upload it for you guys. So no. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we'll go ahead and get uh, Daily Duels up on time. Uh, Stanzi got my tweet, so uh, he'll be joining me. Omega showed up and's like, hey, you know, I was gone. It's like, where was everyone? Like, all this time I was sitting there waiting. I was like, wow, we are, like, scraping the barrel on time. So... Oh, this video is gonna be late. Apologize. I, I like that. I've been kind of, I've, I've been better at getting videos up on time, but it just happens when you have to rely on other people to do your content. It's one of the risks when it comes to uh, doing tag things on and having people join me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Just yeah. 
So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed despite it being only me that I hope that I, I kept you guys entertained. But I mean, for, for how long I've been doing this thing for uh, stuff for almost four years, I should know how to talk to myself. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for the support, and I will see you guys uh, on Thursday, hopefully on time with some more DM Bill commentary with someone joining me. Alright people, thanks for watching.